Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at velocity time graphs for exercise 9b. So velocity time graphs a bit different to uh, distance time graphs or displacement time graphs. Make sure you know the difference between the two of them and make sure you identify the difference between the two of them when you're doing this question like this. Okay, so in mechanics we label velocity as v um, and time as t. Um, a graph that looks like this, where the line is on the bottom axis here, that means the velocity is zero throughout the whole time that this, um, this uh, action is being taken. So the, the object is stationary. When, uh, when the graph looks a little bit like this and the velocity line is horizontal like this, it's a bit like chugging along the motorway. You've got the same velocity over a series of time, so you're just chugging along on that motorway at a constant speed. Your speed isn't changing, you're not increasing your speed, you're not decreasing your speed. When the graph looks like this and it's at a slight angle, it means you're changing your speed. So your speed is gradually increasing over a certain time period. It means you're accelerating. If the line was coming down the other way, you'd be decelerating or you'd have negative acceleration. And the key part here is that on a velocity time graph, the gradient represents the acceleration. Remember previously when we looked at displacement time graphs, gradient was velocity, in this case gradient is acceleration. It's important you know the difference. Okay, and another key thing that, uh, that we're just blazing over here is that the area under a, dis a velocity time graph is equal to the distance travelled, and hopefully we'll see that in a bit more detail later. Okay, the question here says the diagram below shows a velocity time graph uh, for the motion of a cyclist moving along a straight road for 12 seconds. For the first 8 seconds, the tie for 8 seconds, she moves at a constant speed of 6 meters per second. She then decelerates at a constant rate, um, stopping after a further 4 seconds. So what that means is that she's applied the brakes and she keeps the brakes on at the same force slowing it down at the same force uh, constantly throughout those four seconds. Uh, the distance travelled by the cyclist. Now the distance travelled here is the area under the graph. Now you have to break this graph up into several different sections here. You can use the area of trapezium formula like they're doing here. You break it up into a rectangle and a triangle. However you want to work out the area on this graph, um, that's what the... Uh, displacement is and hopefully you're familiar with this at GCSE and hopefully um, this is this is all okay so far so the area here is 60 but the units on this is the distance traveled is 60 meters uh, find the rate of deceleration of the cyclists so um, to work out the gradient here we do difference in y or difference in v divided by difference in x which is time so it's display change in v divided by change in time. So in this case here, we're changing by negative 6 on the velocity. Four seconds have gone past, so our gradient here is minus 1.5. Therefore, the deceleration is 1.5. Or you could also say there that the acceleration is minus 1.5. Okay. All right, then, another little question here, then. Uh, particle P moves in a straight line, accelerates uniformly from rest to a speed of 8 metres per second in T seconds. OK, so we've got an unknown in the time now. It's really important with these questions, we've got a good, accurate diagram. Uh, the particle T then travels at a constant speed for 5 T seconds, so we're up to 6 T seconds now. It then decelerates to rest uniformly over the next 40 seconds. Now when it says the word uniformly here, that means that when we draw the diagram, our acceleration and deceleration are going to have straight lines. They're not going to be curved in any way. Part A, draw a velocity time graph for this motion. Okay, the first, the second sentence here says it travels up to a velocity of 80 meters per second in T seconds, uniformly. So that means this line here is a straight line up to speed of 8 after t seconds. The next bunch of time here is travelling at a constant speed, so that means flat line, for 5 t seconds. We've got a further 5 t seconds on this. And then it says accelerates, decelerates uniformly over the next 40 seconds. So this part here on the graph 
is going to be at 40 seconds down to rest. The next question here is given that the particle travels 600 meters, find the value of t. Well, if distance equals area under graph, then we should be able to work out what t is from this. What we'll do is we'll, um, you can either split it into two triangles and a rectangle, or you can use the area of a trapezium formula here. So A is the top part, B is the bottom part, H is the height. So it's 5T on the top, height of 8 and a base of 6T plus 40. Sub that all into your formula and you know the area of this shape underneath here is going to be 600 because that's the distance travelled. Rearrange your formula, subtract your 20, divide by your 5.5 and we get T is 10. Okay. So there we are. So that's uh, that's a very typical question. You have to be really good at these. You have to you have to know how to work out the time from from being given a uh, distance travelled. Um, so yeah, it's a very common question. All right then. So your turn to have a go at this question here. Then uh, pause the video and try this one out. All right then, so a car is moving along straight roads. When t is equal to zero, the car is at point A with velocity 10 meters per second. I've read a little bit ahead here. Part A is asking me to draw a velocity time graph, so I'll start now. So part T, zero, so okay, so we're starting at 10 meters per second here on the velocity axis there. This is in meters per second, and we're on seconds down on this axis here. Uh, this velocity is maintained for 30 seconds, so 30 seconds here. The driver then applies, applies the brakes and the car uniformly decelerates, coming to a rest uh, point B after 42 seconds. So 42 seconds appears here. So that's 12 seconds that they decelerated for. Uh, sketch the velocity time graph here. Done. Part B, find the distance from A to B. Well, the distance here is just going to be the area under the graph. Oops, A equals area. So, therefore, uh, let's use the trapezium formula here. So, area is equal to the top, which is 10, plus the base, which is... No, the base the top isn't 10. The top is 30, sorry. 30 plus the 42 on the base, divide that by 2 and times then that by the height of this graph, which is 10. So what we're going to get is 72 times uh, 10 divided by 2. So we're there going to get 360. What's the units? Well, it's in metres per second, so we're in metres here. All right then, so that's the answer to this question here then. Uh, definitely pause the video and have a practice at exercise 9b. There'll be lots of questions there, some easy, some quite difficult. Persevere through the difficult ones, ask your teacher for help if you need any. And uh, thanks very much for watching this video.